Gill. I'm the CEO and founder of Artisan Agility. And this is another video in our series on working with virtual teams. So this video specifically is going to be targeted at sprint operations. In other words, how do you, in a virtual environment, working with a remote team or a virtual team, how do you change? What do you need to do differently? Um, the good news is not a lot, okay? But there are some important things, some important tips that I can offer that might make your sprints a little bit more successful while everyone is working remotely. First thing I wanna suggest is that you shorten your sprints. If you're not already running a one week sprint, start running a one week sprint, okay? The one week is gonna be a little tough. Uh, it's, it runs very, very quickly, but the thing is, a one week sprint will allow for better communication and better collaboration. All right, there won't be so many things that we're trying to get done at the same time. Everybody will end up being more focused and they'll probably collaborate better and get more done. It will also shorten your planning, your review, and your retrospective events. Uh, the shorter the sprint, the shorter those events tend to be. So when you're staring at a screen all day in your, in your home office, a shorter event is gonna work better for you. The other thing that's really important that a shorter sprint is gonna help you with is that in this environment where we're all working from our home, our home offices, maybe not even used to working in our home offices, team members tend to feel a sense of isolation. The more they're sitting by themselves, the more they tend to work independently and by themselves. In other words, the longer it goes, the worse it gets. A shorter sprint keeps everything moving. It keeps everything uh, you know, almost needs to be done. Uh, everything has just a couple days and then we gotta wrap it up. So by increasing the pace, you'll increase a little bit of pressure, not stress, stress is bad, pressure is good. Uh, it'll increase a little bit of pressure and enable your team to get more done more quickly. Uh, number two, use Scrum Masters. Plan your, your events in advance, okay? You should be doing this anyway. But when it comes to doing things remotely, you want to be on top of it. So plan your events in advance. And what I mean by that is, what are the topics you need to cover? What are the goals for each topic? How do you want to facilitate that conversation? How do you want to reach a decision? And how long do you think it should take? You don't have to stick to it exactly, but if you have an approach, you'll do a better job of facilitating. Now, I do want to let you know, um, stuff that we normally keep behind the firewall in, in our advanced CSM class we're putting out there where everyone can see it, okay? If you wanna take a look at this, it's called, uh, it's called Mastering uh, Event Planning. And it's a short document, a lot of individual tips and a worksheet that you can use to better plan events in advance. You will find a link to that below this video. And at the end of this video, if you just provide your email address, we'll show you where to find it. Um, second thing, when it comes to your events uh, done remotely, Put a password on them, okay? That we put this in another blog post a couple days ago, uh, but there's uh, a whole new, um, well, uh, a whole new depth to which some people have fallen out there uh, called Zoom bombing, uh, where they basically randomly select meeting IDs and jump into Zoom meetings. Uh, you don't want that happening. So put a password on your events, make sure that only the people that are supposed to be there, in other words, your team has it, you should be fine. Okay. Next, getting updates. Okay. If you're a product owner, um, you want to get updates from your development development team members once or twice a day. Okay. It doesn't have to be long. It doesn't have to be detailed. And what I mean by updates is you really just want to check in. How's it going? Do you have any questions? Do you need anything from me? Can you show me what you have so far? Okay. Uh, that and that can be done if you're a product owner. That can be done with two, three, four people at the same time. Uh, not at your daily scrum. Please don't, don't do that, okay? Daily scrum is for something else. Do it after. Uh, if you're a scrum master, try to check in with every team member at least once a day, not including the daily scrum. Find out what's going on, uh, what's in their way, anything that they need from you, any way that you can help. Okay, if you want to be an effective scrum master, you got to be out there. You got to be where people can see you. And the best way to do that is to be in contact with your team members at least once a day, independently, one at a time. Okay. Next thing I want to talk about is backlog refinement. 
Uh, backlog refinement still needs to be done. Even in a virtual environment, nothing changes, okay? And the thing with backlog refinement is I've heard people say, well, we're gonna do a lot of backlog refinement, get way ahead of ourselves, and we won't have to do it again in this virtual environment. Bad idea, okay? Really, really bad idea. This is also where shortening your sprints is gonna help, okay? When you do backlog refinement, you only refine about a sprint or two ahead. So you're only refining about a week to a week and a half, maybe two weeks of work. Do it as you normally would do it, okay? Do it on your normal schedule. Now, if you're running a one-week sprint, that means you're doing it once a week. So pick a day during the week when you can, for about an hour or so, uh, do some backlog refinement. Um, also, prepare for backlog refinement, mostly to you product owners. Um, make sure you know what's coming up next, that you know the answers to the questions that you're probably gonna get asked. Make sure you're ready to answer those questions. If you can't answer those questions, refinement's going to be a waste of time. All right, uh, sprint review, okay? Uh, you might, I mean, in the Scrum Guide, it suggests, actually it says that the development team provides the demo of the product, and that's fine. I would recommend that the development team figure out who's demoing what in the sprint review before the sprint review begins. So in other words, figure out what you're gonna demo and who's doing which piece. And then when the sprint review begins, make sure that you are all ready to share your screen and demo your piece. Nothing will waste time faster in a sprint review than everyone having to figure out where they were, what they were doing, and how to get to where they have to be. Have it ready when the review begins. Do the demo first, then you don't have to worry about it anymore, all right? Uh, you might also consider just rotating, uh, having one person do demo everything this review, next review someone else can do it, next review someone else can do it, uh, but by having, by having one person do it, they share their screen and they run through the whole list. You don't have to go back and forth, different people sharing their screen. And when it comes to the retrospective, do not skip the retrospective, okay? It is more important now, even more important now, than when we're all together, because we're not all together. And the easiest way for a team to slide backward into low productivity and low collaboration is by not moving forward. Okay, you know the old phrase, if you're not moving forward, you're moving backward, okay? Well, if you're not getting better, you're getting worse. Uh, you don't want that to happen in this environment. Those retrospectives need to happen, and I wanna challenge you too. When you do a retrospective, talk about, don't, don't talk about little things that are easy to fix, like a process that didn't work or a tool that didn't work. You can, you can handle those, they're easy. But I want you to find something that your team could do better in a virtual environment next week. And I want you to plan how you're gonna do that. And then I want you to take that plan and put it into sprint planning so that it's part of next sprint and it's something you're absolutely gonna do. If you do those things, you can end up with a better sprint, a more productive sprint, more engaged team, a better self-organizing, empowered team, and you're simply gonna have more fun, okay? So good luck, uh, be safe. Be helpful in this environment, take care of yourselves, uh, and collaborate, communicate, and, and become amazing remote teams. I'll see you soon. Take care.